Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being on the call this morning. We had the pleasure of speaking with John Rizzo, who is the author of this wonderful book, Marketing Ain't Easy. Excited to have you on this morning, John. Thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Kelly. I'm a huge fan of the Chambers of Commerce, uh, all of them. So it's a pleasure to be here at the Hendersonville Area Chamber today. And I'm excited to talk Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Wonderful. So let's start by, t tell us a little bit about yourself first. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I have a video production background, a photography background. Um, so that's the, the angle I come at all this from, the marketing uh, side of business. Um, I started a video production company. Uh, I guess to begin with the professional, I had a sales background before the video stuff, but really in, in the early 2000s, 2099, 90, you know, 2000, I started my production company and I ended up selling that company to an advertising agency uh, in Boston um, in 2012. And uh, I ran their video department there for a while, came to Tennessee and now I live in Nashville and uh, I was marketing director for Vincent Peach Fine Jewelry. Um, I worked a lot, very closely, if you know, Hiller, Plum, Heat, and Coolant. I worked very closely with Jimmy Hiller um, and, and the team over there. And I've, yeah, I've worked with brands for, for all the way, you know, from independent businesses and smaller, you know, sized businesses that you might uh, might not have heard of all the way up through, uh, you know, Mercedes-Benz, Burton, Snowboards, uh, big, bigger companies. Um, so, yeah, all the whole gambit. <laughs> and I love every minute of it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, glad to have you this morning and to kind of take us through marketing during this time of year. So tell us a little bit about the basis of your book. Yeah, so um, it, it, what, a, what an interesting time of year it is to, to market. What a year, huh? Um, right. It's been ups and downs, a roller coaster this year. So, but it's interesting, <laughs> you know, there people are pivoting in different ways. Um, but anyways, the, the book is about, obviously marketing is not easy, all right? It's people try to throw money at it and it's not, that's not the best way to approach it. This guy, John Wanamaker, uh, said a long time ago that I know half my marketing is working. I just don't know which half. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of us have felt that way, um, you know, dealing with numbers and which, hey, how, how do I know which dollars are really hitting that bottom line? Uh, so I wanted to jump into that and see, uh, you know, what I could add. Uh, and then I realized as I started writing about my experiences in the book and as, as I started writing about my, my method and my process, that there was really an ideal customer method that was, you know, kind of floating around out there. People use demographics, things like that to try and target um, their, you know, these, this, a, a new customer or existing customers are their best. So I said, you know what, instead of starting at the demographic and what you really want or what you're hoping for what your business will be, let's start at your current, where you are right now. Let's see who's your best customer right now. That's the easiest to work with, um, loves your work, tells everybody about it, tells everybody about your services, and, and they spend the most money with you because they love you, all right? It's, it, it's business, about the bottom line, right? But, um, you know, when you start at that point and try to multiply those customers that are already your current ideal customers, then you're gonna, you're gonna you know, birds of a feather flock together is the idea. Uh, and you're gonna market to specific, really that specific person, you direct your marketing to them, you're gonna end up marketing to other people like them. And that's who you wanna multiply. You don't want the difficult customers, right? <laughs> that are, uh, that are, you know, giving you headaches, they want returns, they want, you know, exchanges, they want, you know, revisions if you're a service company or, or you know, like video production. I've dealt a lot of revisions over the years. Yeah. And some customers I just noticed love whatever I do. You know, there's certain people that are just so happy to work together and I want more of them. Um, I'm sure, you know, I saw the VFWs on the call. There are probably some members there that are, uh, you know, that, that support the organization a little bit. There, I, I saw a couple other companies, you know, as, as Kelly, you're in a bank, you know, some Customers, you know, complain a little more than others, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and some people just don't work there. It's okay. But some people are amazing customers, and those are the ones we want to really personalize. I don't use the word target. I use the word personalize um, to really get to them. And there are a lot of ways to do that, especially this time of year. That's why we're talking about three marketing mistakes <laughs> that a lot of businesses make uh, that kill your holiday sales. All right? This is your big time of the year. So, so anyways, that's a little bit about me, but if, yeah, I can get right into it if you'd Absolutely. like Absolutely. Go ahead and take us to those three marketing mistakes that happen at Christmas. You got it. Um, now, I, I really was thinking about retail businesses when I uh, started putting this presentation together, but I think that, you know, if you read the book and Kelly, how did it work out over the 
over your weekend there at, at, at drill. <laughs> it was good, good. We'll talk about how many times it took me to read it later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. I want it to be two flights, you know. So right, we'll right, see. right. Okay. <laughs> um, Great book, though. Thank Loved you it. very much. It's available on Amazon and my website, AmericanPhotoVideo.com. <laughs> so, uh, ah, beautiful, Vanna. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so there are a lot of things that can really kill your ROI this time of year. And uh, I wanted to just talk about a few ways to avoid them. Now, if you haven't been working, let me preface this and illustrate how important it is first. Um, retail businesses make... 40% of their total gross income, okay? Total sales, all right? 40% during the holiday season. That's huge. <laughs> That's, we're talking three months of the year, they're making almost half their total revenue. Um, that should tell you how important this is, not just for retail companies, just not, not just for, for business to business, but service companies as well. I think every type of business can get, you know, can appreciate a boost this time of year. Uh, if you're just thinking ahead. That's all you gotta do. Um, and you may not have been doing this for the past. I really, you know, when I was in the jewelry business uh, a little more closely, I do still do a lot of advertising for jewelry companies and, and Vincent Peach Fine Jewelry, for example. But um, you know, when I was when I was really doing that in the nitty gritty day to day, <laughs> I tried to be six months ahead of the curve. Um, so especially for these, you know, when you're dealing with magazines and you have to get into, into a gift guide, which is free from the editor, <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're dealing with bloggers and vloggers and things, you really have to, uh, you have to stay not only six, three months ahead, but you have to be three months ahead of them so that you can get them the materials they need, take the pictures they want or send them stuff back and forth, really get ready and write your press releases, everything. Get ready for the season because it's so impactful for your business, so important. Um, so that's so the first mistake that a lot of people make are, is not using your, your current modes uh, or your mediums of, uh, of communication or marketing as effectively as possible. Um, that means for me, it starts with emails. I got to tell you, I'm such a huge fan of email marketing. It's the cheapest. It's, a, it's the best bang for your buck. Okay. Uh, when you talk about television advertising, it starts and, and you know, me, buying media online and Facebook it gets a little convoluted and it gets, it's expensive. And you, you know, you're not, you're trying to figure out who you're going to reach. But when you send out emails, you know, I can tell you this. So I'm a big fan of MailChimp. They don't pay me. <laughs> I just love their reporting. All right. I love to send an email out. I can make a nice graphic email or, you know, embed video. I think you can tag videos from YouTube. We can put them in there. Anyways, then when you get it back, you can see exactly who clicked on your emails, how many times they clicked, where they clicked, if they opened it, who didn't open it. It's, it's invaluable, and you really don't get that kind of granular information through other media outlets or media sources. I wish you did. I wish I could measure television commercials as granularly, <laughs> if that's a word, as, as I can with email marketing. I just, I go nuts for it. So, and not to mention, it's a direct line to your customer's pocket. So if you're not using emails as effectively as, as you could be, um, I think it's important. That's where I would start if you're taking notes. First, take notes on, on where to buy marketing ain't easy. But <laughs> second of all, um, definitely look at, you know, what is your email strategy? How often are you emailing people? This time of year, you just want to make sure you're in front of people. Um, they're looking, people are looking to buy. They're looking to, to give, especially this year. They're on the radio talking about just buy a gift certificate from a restaurant, you know? And so be the restaurant in their email that says, hey, we're here <laughs> and we're still open. We're doing great. This is the home stretch. I'm, I'm optimistic, you know, about, about the whole Proper, what we're going through right now, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to mention it too much, but, uh, but we can because it's, it's a tough time, but we're coming out of it. So be ready to come out of it. Six months ago, we were talking about how are you going to pivot and stay relevant through this, you know, through the situation. But at now we're talking about how are you going to come out of it? Um, so you really want to start thinking ahead, just like you're, if you were thinking about the holiday marketing, you want to stay ahead of that. Now you want to stay three, six months ahead. Where are we going to be? You want to think about that and how that how your business is going to pivot back into that and, and let people know how you can stay relevant through all this. Um, anyways, there are other things you can do uh, to, to work your current mediums more effectively. Also, say, for example, I, you know, um, I have a friend who's a, a deal. His name is a deal. Like, let's make a deal. He's tell, he tells you uh, he's an I wrote about him in my book. He's a good friend and also a, a prominent uh, executive in the car business. Um, and he is always on the radio talking about, you know, just he's the expert on the radio. So if you're in your local market, 
uh, get in touch with the people you're already, maybe you're already doing, running TV ads or, or talking to the news. Maybe you're doing, maybe you're on Talk of the Town in Nashville, for example, or something. You know, use those sources and really see what you can do to help them do their job better and be the expert in the field. It's free and it reaches a lot of people and it's a, it's a great endorsement, seamless advertising. You want to get, just be a part of the flow, you know, the, the whole media flow. Um, you can do that. You know, I have Jimmy Hiller, for example, he's on TV all the time, you know, doing interviews about what's going on in the HVAC business um, or the home services. So th those are easy ways to just stay relevant and get in front of people at an affordable rate. <laughs> and it's more yeah. impactful. So it, it, this year, especially focus on not stopping now. If you've been doing this, go through the holidays, go right through January 1st, because people are still buying, you know, people are divorced they have kids they're going to see in different places their family's not they're not going on christmas morning this right. year maybe they have time to buy more presents you know so or they have time to get involved there's a lot of ways you can use those extra that extra week to really maximize your profitability this time this year all right you so know, and if you're like me like a lot of the mothers that are out there that are feeling guilty because their kids have been trapped indoors for way too long we're overspending <laughs> to compensate to make their make their holiday maybe a little bit more cheerful because it's been such a tough, challenging year. Um, John and Kelly, I don't know if you'd agree, but I think Wendy might, especially because Wendy's in marketing and sales as well, that I think the biggest catch to what you've said so far, and at least tip one, is having a strategy. It's really hard to plan to get into those coupon books and plan to get in those gift giving guides and and have that um, effective email blast campaign if you don't have a marketing strategy. And now is the time um, to really take a look at, okay, who am I targeting in January? How am I gonna reach them throughout the entire year? And um, I'm notorious for this. You know, I come up with an idea and people say, when do you want it done? And I'm, I'm like, tomorrow. <laughs> um, but also having, you, you can still come up with those ideas. You can still think outside of the box and you can still add new, but also having um, the, the plan in place to reach your budget, to reach your goals. Wendy's nodding her head. Would you agree, Wendy, that that's one of the, the big things that a lot of businesses um, have faux pas in? Absolutely, because you have to be able to know what's going on in the future in order to determine what you what actions you need to be able to take. Um, so that includes not only um, your advertising for you and what's going on in your business, but what's going on out there in the world. February is just a few months away. How many of you would would uh, you know uh, do well if you do something now to start planning for what's going to happen before February arrives? Right. I can't tell you how many people have contacted me and said, I want to do an email blast and it, I want it to happen this week to promote my holiday sales. And it's like, we've been booked for weeks, like there's, there's, or months, there's, there's companies that planned like Brown's florist, um, who rips not on this call, which is, oh, which is strange, but very Brown's, busy this week. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh yeah. That's, that would make yeah. sense. <laughs> um, he'll watch this in replay. Um, Brown's florist is notorious that they're, they're like every, the week before Valentine's day, every year, I want to make sure that we're, you know, that we're out there and they've got that in the schedule and planned. Um, which I do want to point out part of the reason, Wendy, why I asked you to speak for a second is one of the main goals to being successful in marketing is building strategic connections, connections that can be um, um, allies for you that you can work together because you're both um, trying to accomplish similar yet different things. And John and Wendy, you two need to have a cup of coffee or a Zoom meeting one on one because I think you could um, work together and, and do it very, do it very well. So yeah, sorry yeah, about that, Kelly. You, John. No, you're good. Absolutely. I hijacked I hijack the screen for a second. <laughs> no worry. Have at it. Well, I'm going to get back to um, a couple of things that you had mentioned before and I had read in the book. Um, I love your ideal customer. I think that's really important because sometimes we focus on the person that we don't have yet versus the person we have in front of us. And one of the quotes that are in your book is, when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. And I think that's so true. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'm so glad you led right into that because that's the second point, right? <laughs> um, and planning. Uh, the book really, I wrote it to be a guide to writing a marketing plan. Okay, mm -hmm. so each, it's three phases this program I'm doing. I'll get to there at the next point. Um, but uh, it's really, you want to build this whole strategy and then it's about making that strategy work um, and just rinse and repeat. Uh, so again, the ideal customer 
uh, is I, I kind of revised the method, I guess. I don't know if it was really written down <laughs> out there before, before, but I, I didn't come up with it, to be honest. You know, I just revised it. Um, but the key is getting to know that ideal customer, all right? And so really, like you're saying, there is a real person out there that is your best customer. And they are, it's like, you know, the, the old adage about a dog dropping a bone that sees in the reflection to get the reflection of the bone. <laughs> you know, you really want to focus on that the customer that's that's with you right now and and how do you make them multiply so it's it's really personalizing it to them and now once you get to know them and you might know them already you might know them very well hopefully you do because they're such a good customer <laughs> um but get to know them a little better and get to know where they look all right and where they are throughout their day if you're looking for places to advertise if when you get to the implementation phase um because all right so we'll, three phases research implementation and uh, measurement those are the, that's my that's the book in a nutshell <laughs> All right. and making that into a marketing plan uh you should definitely read it but it's and, and, and really work through, but, but um, absolutely and part of, the part of it too about the ground rules um i thought was very interesting because it basically walks you through the steps of kind of what you need to focus on things that if you're not in a marketing role and you're just you know opening your own business it really takes you through the steps of what you need to do when you're making that ad and when you're targeting that audience and things like that yeah, I, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that because uh, a lot of people, you know, they might find that as an, a business owner, you might not be an expert in photography or in graphic right. design. And you may, you know, I, I wanted to touch on that because I think those are important to know a little bit about what you're asking people, a creative person to do and how to communicate with them more effectively. Um, I think that's incredibly important in any, this is a really a, cre a creative endeavor here that you're, you're embarking on when you get into marketing. Um, it's not, a, it's not as much of a science as maybe you know your CPA might be getting into. Um, but you know we so anyways, getting back to the ideal customer, um, when you talk to them and you get to know them and you see what magazines they read, what TV stations they watch, if they watch the news or not, if they have kids, where do they drive? Do they take the highway? Uh, do they take the back roads? you know are, are they looking at billboards? Do they you know do they see any of that stuff? Where do you want to spend your money when you get to that point? That's what really uh, can can save a lot of the efficiency in the process. Um, and then the key is once you get to know them, know what they want to see in terms of creative content. And that's where the ground rules really come in. And you can you can really tailor your message and personal it, personalize it to, to your ideal customer. Make them feel good. Make them feel like you really do know them and you care about them and this relationship, this business relationship that you have. Uh, really showing them. And other people are going to see that you care. They're going to see how far you go to... So, you know, for reviews, for example, you got to wow people to get a good review, right? People write really good or really bad reviews most of the time. So when you wow somebody really, you know, other people are going to see that and they're going to see the review and they're going to think that you are going to treat them with the same care and respect and, and value their, their, them as a customer, which is, I think it's invaluable. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's most of the second <laughs> I, the thing I think that most businesses miss uh, this time of year. Um, and then if you'd like, I can jump right into the third, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, there's yeah. so many things on this book that I, I've taken notes on. Um, one of it was new media. And I think that's important for a lot of people to, to kind of think outside of the box. It's not going to be your traditional, you know, send out a flyer anymore. Um, so let's talk a little bit about new media um, and how everything's kind of going virtual and online. And if you don't have an online presence, you're, you're missing a lot of customers there. Yeah, you really, and some customers do want the flyers, you know, and for some businesses that still does work. Direct mail is, is tried and true in a lot of industries, but everybody's online now, right? <laughs> so you really, everybody's on Instagram, everybody's on Facebook, everybody's, they're all playing video games and there are ways to advertise in all of those uh, new areas, all right, of new media. <laughs> um, and it is a little uncharted. Uh, that's why I wanted to touch on it and just make sure that it's in front of people's minds uh, as they, when they're, when they're working through the book and reading and creating their plans. Um, that being said, all right, there is a, a there are best practices <laughs> to new media as well. And I heard such an interesting story on the radio. On the, uh, I'm an NPR listener. Okay. <laughs> Freakonomics, uh, is a great show. I love their, you know, marketplace and their, you know, when they talk about the, about business, I love their, the angles, they really consider, uh, some things that I didn't. And eBay, it turns out, this is just a couple days ago I read this, 
or to listen to the story, eBay cut a hundred million dollars of their paid search <laughs> budget. A hundred million dollars is a, a ridiculous wow. amount of money to cut. That's all. That was ninety-five percent of their paid search budget, and it made no difference on their bottom line. <laughs> so, just wow. to give you an idea, it's crazy, right? How you think people just throw money at, at these at digital ads or and television ads? They just throw money, expecting it to work. And it doesn't, marketing doesn't work like that. <laughs> you know, you can't just throw money and expect people to buy your stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Sorry. It takes yeah. a little, that's why it, it ain't easy. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's gotta, right. <laughs> you have to put it a little el- elbow grease. <laughs> you know, get into yeah. the process well, a little. And one of the things you do mention is continually updating and posting original photos and videos um, will help bring up, bring you up in the search engine. Yes. I think so, that's brilliant. Organic traffic is where it's at. Content creation, all right? I, I consider myself a content creator, not a content curator. There are people out there, you know, you've seen all the emails or Facebook ad, you know, uh, pages where they, they share other people's stuff. And that's fine. Um, if you, you know, it's some articles are great to share. I shared the, about the eBay and dropped $100 million the other day. Uh, but I'm a creator. I shoot videos. I shoot photos. I share stuff that I make. Um, and s- the same with, you know, customers uh, and product shots, everything. I like to, that's the the value, the gold. All right. Um, that's what people want to see too. They want to see themselves in the, in these ads also. Um, so if you can create your own stuff, um, you're going to really drive that organic traffic instead of paid ads, which I, you know, how many times have you ever clicked on a banner ad? to be honest, you know what I mean? Maybe it's great for branding, uh, but I, I just never thought it was amazing. I'm pretty critical of most ad sources, but the gold is content creation. Um, it's it's writing your own uh, blogs and, and talking you know, to, to your customer through blogs, but that's it. That's, it's, it's sharing that through emails, sharing wow stories and success stories and, and really building people up. That's what people I think respond to very well. Um, and it's, it's original, you know, and that's going to drive that organic traffic to your website and really speak to the, the people who are, what if you could only market to the people who are actually going to buy your stuff or your current customers who have already bought from you? Think about how low the acquisition cost goes when you've already sold to somebody. So are you remarketing to these current customers that you have to build them into a, a good quality client and grow with them and help them and bring them along your journey? So you can't just throw money at it. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, I mean, other people, tell, salespeople might tell you that you can, <laughs> but uh, I, I'd have to say, I think it's, it's, if you can put in the extra work and the effort and to really, and, and think through it, uh, people really want to see a quality uh, over quantity. So if, think about that as you're focusing on this stuff. <laughs> that <Absolutely>. helps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another part on here that I wanted to focus on was, um, do you have loud and proud employees? And um, that's huge to me. I think morale in the workplace is so important. Um, I think if you have appreciation for your employees that boosts morale, morale boosts sales. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, uh, it's so funny. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, where do I wanna start with this? Um, working for, with Mercedes-Benz and Burton uh, really, drove this point home. Mercedes-Benz has their slogan is the best or nothing, right? And the employees, when you go to a dealership, you know, you might notice it, but really working with them very closely. I saw when I first got there, all the employees are wearing, you know, Mercedes-Benz logos everywhere, hats, shirts, they're, you know, they're everything. They were talking about the cars, you know, all on their off time. (laughs) And I was like, okay, these guys are at work there. Then we'd go out later and I'd really get to know the team a little more. And they're still talking about the cars and they're still wearing the, the gear, you know, the, the company clothing and, the, and, they're, and they're talking to other people about it when we're out. And I was like, geez, are these guys drinking some kind of Kool-Aid? <laughs> you know? and, and then I'm at Burton and everybody's wearing Burton apparel and they're all snowboarders, you know, and they love it. They all got season passes hanging from their coats and they're, you know, these are people that love, they, I realized they just love working there. And they tell everybody in their lives about it. And they are the best marketing that that company has. They know. So Mercedes had this program where people, the employees could take a car home for a couple of days and really get to know the product. I couldn't believe that. I said, they're going to let the valet driver take the, take a $60,000 sports car home, you know, for the weekend. 
and they do. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, but these people, every single employee knows the product inside and out because, and they love it because they've used it and they really care. Um, it's, it's amazing to see that. I've also worked in other places where they don't have that kind of culture, you know? And I know it's funny. We had the, the code word Mac and cheese <laughs> for me to get on the, on the call earlier. It's my favorite. All right. I'm a Mac and cheese fan till I die. All right. I, it's maybe sooner than later because of it, but uh, I'm, you know, when I was at the ad agency, I was always the guy, you know, creating these little bit fun events. Cause I, you know, I, I work hard. I also like to play hard, but we, you know, so I, I put together this, I put together Mac and cheese cook off. Okay. For example, and it made the, it made work a lot more fun for everybody. We had a whole judging, you know, double blind contest, you know, little, it was just one example, little things like that, I think go a really long way. And, and when people, you know, they got home, they're making food with their spouse or whatever, their friends, they're telling people about what we did at work. They're telling people about the business. They're telling people about the, all of a sudden the conversation leads to other, what are their clients, you know, other things that they do likes, hopefully not dislikes, but really that is invaluable advertising. You're, you're, you're more relevant at that moment than you are anywhere online or any, in any TV commercial, anywhere else in the marketing industry. All right. When you get that, that person to person friend testimonial, all right. About your business from the employees and it's not solicited. Gosh, that's, that's where that's gold, you know? So that's what, um, yeah, it's a huge part. I'm glad, man, you, you did read the book pretty well, huh, Kelly? <laughs> Thank you. How does that work for you in your business, if you don't mind me asking? No, it's, I think it's important. I think one thing that's hard with a corporation like First Horizon, and if we have such a great um, leadership in the bank, but sometimes in the retail branches, you feel disconnected from those people. Um, you know, I, I'm a little different because of my role, but I know some of the tellers and some of the bankers, it's a little different because they don't get to feel that leadership from them. They have one branch manager, and um, it's hard to keep that culture and keep that buy-in. Um, when you're so detached from, you know, your headquarters or your leadership team. That is tough. That's one of the, that's a, a stumbling point for a lot of businesses as they grow from that first location to their first right. few locations. Third location starts to get a little sticky. You know, the, the, the owners and maybe not present at the shop every day. So you start to lose little bits of morale. You lose the culture. You lose best practices sometimes, you know, sometimes I, man, I remember seeing this guy a deal. <laughs> I remember seeing him go and pick up little pieces of garbage everywhere, like little bits of, you know, paper, like trash that might've fallen on the ground a little. So I said, a deal, what are you doing, man? I know there's a lot of people that you have a janitor here. <laughs> you, know, you have a guy that cleans at the Mercedes dealership every day, all day, but you're picking up these things. He goes, everything matters. Every little piece of this matters. And when people see me doing that, then they, take pride in their workspace as well. And they know the boss is going, but sometimes when the boss leaves, uh, depending on how you grow and how you're growing in your business, not everybody has shares those values. Um, and it can be very difficult to keep that, to keep that up. Like you're saying, um, if you don't have, if every branch manager is not bought in like that, if they don't have that culture from their leadership at corporate, it can be difficult. You know, I've, I've worked at a, at a, uh, a car dealership group uh, before I got into the video production side as much. Um, and I, I sold cars, I did internet marketing and we had, they have now 55 dealerships uh, in the group. And uh, it was really interesting to see they had bigger corporate events, the biggest loser contests, things like that. But the owner was there all, you know, tried to make the rounds very often. Um, but I could see it was, it, you know, things start falling through the cra cracks, slipping through and, uh, and it's tough. So you have to have a, a plan. Like we talked about earlier, you really have to have a plan and think a, a strategy to, to make, make sure your employees feel valued and their opinions are valued and their ideas. And they really are, they take ownership of their role. Um, that's what it's really all about. The, the loud and proud is about taking ownership of your, whatever job it is and doing it with pride and, uh, and letting, cause every customer is going to see you, whatever you're doing, even if you're the valet. You know, right. that's the first point of contact a lot of times. That could be the most important, <laughs> you know, yeah. so. Absolutely, absolutely. So we know that you kind of had this beginning with car sales, then going into the marketing video aspect of it. Um, and you shifted into working advertisement for different companies and corporations. What led you to write the book? Well, yeah, uh, um, to be honest, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, you know, I, I got my MBA, uh, I think in 2016, 
Um, and I was thinking about going back for to school for a PhD. I didn't know what to go to school for. <laughs> you know, I was like, do I do I need a PhD first of so all? There's a DBA, uh, a Doctor of Business Administration. I didn't think I needed that. You know, and nobody knows what that is, anyways. <laughs> I don't think so. I said, what can I do to really get a better understanding of, of my career, uh, of myself? How can I invest in myself a little more? And then I so I said, I'll I'll then maybe I'll start compiling these ideas. I have learned over the years best practices and and the other side you know, of the business is things, what doesn't work. I've seen it all. I've seen what what people do in, in our advertising to that makes them pull their hair out, you know, and how frustrated people can get with the marketing department, for example, in-house marketing departments. I saw, uh, I've seen countless marketing directors fired, you know, and I've been in, at the agency when uh, when people are yelling and screaming up at each other, creative directors and, and and at their teams and salespeople yelling over tables and meetings, and I, you know I love every minute of it. It makes it interesting. But uh, I wanted to go through and say, all right, guys, I've seen you know as a customer, I've been uh, on the just I've worked with so many companies as a uh, director, uh, making their commercials and their videos, and I really have to learn a lot about them to be able to make a good quality video for people. So. Uh, or photos, uh, whatever it might be, or or their, you know, content creation for the, for the blogs and and uh, and writing. You know, I've written for tons of them. So uh, I saw what worked, what didn't, and I really wanted to make a, a best practices guide to creating. And it, it just grew. It was it slowly, it organically grew from from hey, how do you make the best video? To okay, well we have different we have all these different ways you can advertise there's new media there's traditional media there's the testimonials all these different things you can use the rules of <laughs> that i got into the creative rules you know i said well if you're going to work with creative people you should know how to talk to them and make things flow a little better maybe even do some of it yourself if you want or at least right. know you know if you're jimmy hiller for example is a plumber you know so he knows how to do the plumbing <laughs> he knows a lot about hvac uh i think it's important also to know uh, a little bit about what everybody does in your company, including the marketing team. Um, so I, yes, I started writing that stuff down and then it began to grow into how do I help people build a marketing plan uh, and a strategy, so. Wonderful, really yeah, and I think it's important, um, you know, people have this great idea to start this business and you know, they may start as a doing this, that, the DBA, a small business and they wanna grow it and they just don't know how. You know, you may be an expert in your field, um, but if you don't know the whole marketing scheme of it, um, having books like this, having people like Wendy um, that you can contact. I think it's so important because you, you wanna make sure that your idea is successful. Um, so yeah. grateful for the book. We're grateful for the information. I wanna um, finish up really quick with a couple of things. Um, I know right now mail is kind of behind. You, you know, if you order something right now, you're not gonna, most likely gonna get it before Christmas. Um, do you have any advice to those retail stores um, what they can do to kind of push last minute sales so people can come into the store since we're not gonna be able to get things online at this point. Sure, yeah, and it's tough with bigger companies like Amazon and you know, it's that's a little more difficult. If you're a smaller business and you have an e-commerce site, um, I would recommend things like a, a priority shipping at this point, if anything, um, for if you, you know, sometimes you can do, I worked a lot with um, uh, Shopify, for example, and you can do tiered, pricing structures with your uh, with your discounts and free shipping, for example, I would do maybe a, a free priority shipping if they hit a certain amount of sales, uh, depending on your, your, uh, your margins. Um, that's a great way to, to really drive those lat we did that, you know, we were selling jewelry till the to two days before Christmas, for example. Um, also, you know, financing offer financing uh, on everything if you're not doing that yet, uh, there are companies you can set up today and be offering financing tomorrow. That can really make a difference for somebody. And um, really talk to your customer. If you know that ideal customer and you know that they're not traveling for the holidays, maybe they're maybe they're willing to, to take delivery just after the holiday, just after maybe Christmas day. I'm, I should, you know, I know I, I hesitate to just say that because I know there are other faiths, <laughs> but um, I think, you know, this hol the holiday season is Hanukkah and Christmas right there that's what people are buying for um and i think christmas is the real driver of that with the you know holiday music <laughs> is playing people are buying um i would try to to really push with your consumer uh the idea that you can take delivery through you know new year's and it's you know if you're not traveling if you 
if you're, you know, your family is somewhere else and you can just, you know, send, you're sending it to somebody anyways, or drop shipping, basically, you know, you, you buy from Amazon, and you're shipping to your, you know, my mom's in New York, for example, you know, I think, you know, if it got to her a day after Christmas or two days after she knew it was coming, I think people are understandable this time of year. Um, let them know, let your customers know that that's okay, you know, and that you're there to get there as fast as possible. But if they're sending stuff to somebody else, I mean, it's not such a big deal and they will totally understand that. And, and maybe they get a discount because of it or some kind of bundle. I love bundling <laughs> uh, products together, <laughs> you know, gift baskets and gift guides. I'm, I'm always putting stuff together. I just take a picture of a few products together, put it on a website and, and it gives you another whole nother product <laughs> to offer. So um, yeah, I, I think that there are a lot of things you can do. And, and again, just emailing people, let them know, Hey, we are open. We're taking precautions, obviously still staying, staying very safe. Um, you know, let them know that if, if you have to have them come into your store to buy something, let them know, maybe you do curbside pickup, something like that. You can order in advance make special arrangements for people that they really appreciate that. Maybe you offer local delivery. Maybe you can use DoorDash or, or another Uber mm -hmm. type you know, business. There are a lot of things you can do to think outside the box and really grab those last couple sales. Cause once it's done, right. I mean, what are you waiting for? You're waiting for Valentine's day at that point to really make another big push Absolutely. for a, a holiday. Yeah. And so, yeah. Well, if there's anybody that knows small business around here and is the expert on how to make those grow, it's Kathleen. Kathleen, anything you want to add to that? Oh, thanks, Kelly, so much. I appreciate it. Well, first, I want to mention that we do have um, the Better Business Bureau, Leadership Middle Tennessee, Alive National on the call today. Um, so we do have a lot of people that have a lot of connections, but we also have everybody from solopreneurs, so salespeople that are in business for themselves, to um, McAllister's, who's a local restaurant establishment and building their brand in our community, which is, which is important, even if it's a, a larger corporation. Um, so one of the things I want to mention is we, we talked a little bit about how you have to have a plan for where you're going and, and how to get there. Um, I wouldn't stop after the holidays. I think having a plan to market year round is, is, is imperative, um, but also to build your we, you know, to build who you are and how many people you surround yourself with. Just because you can do everything doesn't mean you should be doing everything. And I think it's really, really important that especially some of the small businesses. And if you could reach out and encourage them, I was just at an establishment yesterday who had a now hiring sign in his front door. He said he was overwhelmed. He was trying to do deliveries. And he said, we're actually doing well this season, but um, I, I need help. And then I said, well, you know, the chamber can help you that with this. And we have this and we have this and we have this. And he went, yeah, I need to find someone technical to help me with those things. And it was something as simple as posting the now hiring post on our website or on our social media piece. So I think sometimes we get stuck working in our business that we stop working for our business and, and moving it forward. So that's why learning how to surround yourself with a we, even if you're a, a, a solopreneur, even if you're a one person show. Um, John, I don't know if you know this, I think we talked about it a little bit, but one of the things that impressed me the most um, your video skills, are, they're, they're awesome. And I spent a lot of time in marketing and, video, and, and photography and video um, in, in my life. And you're, they're, they're high quality. I mean, so you're, you're dealing with large advertisers. When you talk about you know, the BMWs and you talk about the high-end jewelry stores, this is something that, that I used to teach a lot that why reinvent the wheel? You know, follow the lead of some of these larger corporations and, and merge it into your small business and infuse it into your small business. If they have advertising dollars and if they have a team of consumer psychologists that are analyzing what everybody is, is what those demographics are doing, why, why, um, you know, why, why take it and try and figure out how to do it yourself? But most important, so, so surround yourself with people that can help you where you're weak. Um, build your we bigger than you possibly can ever imagine. Become an authoritative leader. You know, I love that you asked John why he wrote the book and what made him qualified to write the book. Um, John, I'm not discrediting you in any way, shape, or form because I've done that myself. Um, but my husband used to say, Kathleen, what makes you an expert on photography? How can you write these books on photography? And I, I didn't know what an f-stop was or how to pick up. I, like, I didn't know anything about that. But I knew how to help people make money and I knew what I believed and I knew what I was passionate about. 
So all of you can become authoritative leaders in your field and in your industry and in your line of work. You know, it's amazing to me every Wednesday when I put together our newsletter, how I'm desperately searching for things to add to our community resource blog page every single week. Like I'm trying to add something new and that's free advertisement. And like you said, John, that goes out and increases your, you know, your, your ability to be Googled <laughs> um, because it's going to come up on our search engines and we have large rankings there. So just a few tips, just a few pointers. I, I want to encourage everybody to connect with people like John and, and to reach out and support one another, but get those small businesses. The best way you can help them at the end of this year and the beginning of next is to kind of give them a little kick and say, keep moving, just keep moving, put one foot in front of the other. And, and we'll make it through, you know, this pandemic. So thank you, Kelly, for letting me share. I appreciate that. Um, back to you. Absolutely. And thank you, John, for taking the time out of your day to be on this call. And if you haven't already gotten the book, get the book. It's great. It's very helpful, very useful. Um, I appreciate you being here and um, everyone being on the call. Hope everybody has a safe holiday. There, Kathleen's got the book. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I really and, uh, thank you, Kelly. It's been yeah. great. Um, and, and Kathleen, it's been amazing. Aaron, thank you for putting these events together. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, my website, again, uh, if you want to take a note, is AmericanPhotoVideo.com. Uh, the book is available there. I did just, uh, I have the ebook out, which is free if you're a Kindle Unlimited member. And I have, let's see, the obviously paperback is out. I'll have an audio book out soon. Um, but yeah, it's all available on Amazon. And uh, I do, I'm, I know you have a lot of marketing people around here, but I, I'm in Nashville and I do a lot of consultations and I, yeah, I create a lot of content. So if you're looking for somebody to help out, uh, feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm happy to sit down and talk. I'm out here in Hendersonville, whatever, um, and all around the area. So happy to get involved with every, I love the Chambers of Commerce. <laughs> so you guys are doing a great job and I really appreciate you having me. It's such a pleasure to be involved uh, at this level. So thank Wonderful. you, Kelly. Well, thank you again. And everybody, I'd like to take a moment at the end of this to kind of introduce ourselves. Tell us who you're with. Um, we kind of, we started doing that before and then we've gotten kind of busy on calls. I just want to take a few minutes um, and you share who you are and uh, what company you're with and if you have anything coming up between now and the first of the year. Um, so we'll start with Dave Mooney, if that's okay. Well, good morning. Dave Mooney from the VFW Post 9851 here in Hendersonville. And our big event this weekend is our food pantry is coming up and it's Christmas time and uh, we have turkeys and hams to hand out to the folks that uh, are needy veterans here in Sumner County. And so if you know a needy veteran, please uh, send them over to the VFW Saturday morning, 9 to 11, and we'll fix them up with all the food they can carry away. So appreciate it. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Wendy? Let me unmute myself. Good morning. I'm Wendy Navarro. I'm the CEO of Navarro Creative Group. We are an internet marketing agency. So we do website design, SEO, uh, Facebook ads, things like that. John, I really enjoyed your presentation. Um, great job. I'm going to pick up that book and I'm going to give you a call and let's have some coffee. I would love that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's see, Jeff. Are you unmuted? There you yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, Jeff Shannon, uh, WHIN Radio, and um, good to see you, John. When did the beard come into effect? I was on your website. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw me beardless. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's my Corona beard. <laughs> you know, hey, so. I need to get you on our talk show. I'll talk to you later about that. But anyway, so uh, Jeff okay. Shannon, we, uh, of course, at WHIN Radio right here in Hendersonville, the streets of Indian Lake, and uh, just glad to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. And Erin, I think we all know who you are. Any upcoming events with the Chamber that you want to discuss? Yeah, we are kicking off the new year with um, our January 12th monthly luncheon. We're going to have Warren Brown with Nashville Sales Training. He's going to be our special guest speaker. So it is limited seating. So make sure you go online and get your ticket now. It will be offered live stream though so if you can't join on um join us in person you can join us online 
absolutely. And those do sell out fast. So if you want to be a part of that, which I highly recommend, it's a great way to connect with people um, in the community, businesses in the community, get it now before the holidays, because then you'll forget and you'll be sold out. You'll be out of luck. Well, and Kelly and Aaron, I want to tell you that I came up with an idea the other day that I haven't even mentioned to y'all yet, but I was thinking about the whole being able to promote your business in the live stream and how we can do that. Like while people are sitting down for lunch and um, I'm going to encourage people to make up signs. So you don't have to interfere with the microphone and we don't have to have like 50 people coming up to the microphone. So we're going to have you hold a sign up with your team or by yourself promoting your company, who you are. Hi, my name is, you know, you know how like you see on some of the social media posts where they never talk. They just show their sign. Um, mm -hmm. So start working on your signs, register for the luncheon, and um, it will not only be, like you said, in person, but it'll be live streamed and it will be on our YouTube channel as well. So um, free exposure for your, or advertising for your business. Perfect. Thank you. Lee? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm Lee Rux. I am president of Leadership Middle Tennessee, and I'm also co-owner of Christian Brothers Automotive. So if you have car repair needs um, or just maintenance needs, uh, come see us. We're uh, on Main Street, right between Discount Tire and Sonic, across from Bluegrass Shot and Country Club. Open Monday to Friday from 7 to 6. And um, my, my other job as I uh, run a nonprofit called Leadership Middle Tennessee, and we are recruiting now for the class of 2022 which seems like forever away, but um, mm -hmm. it's coming up really quickly. So John, I enjoyed what you shared this morning about marketing. I, I feel like that, you know, it's a challenge. I cover a 10 county region. So to reach all of those folks um, and to find those, uh, those potential candidates for my program, um, I'm always looking for, for new ideas. So I definitely will be reading your book. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, and one more quick thing that um, I just found out like two minutes ago. Um, you may have seen me give my son a fist bump. He just got accepted to his first college. So he will be, so University of North Georgia um, is his first acceptance letter. Hopefully many more will follow. Congratulations. Congrats on that. Wonderful. Christina, do you have a second? I know you're doing front desk duty as well. Okay, we'll come back to you in just a second. <laughs> Nicole, do you want to go ahead? Um, my name is Nicole Thorchek with Berkshire Hathaway Woodmont Realty. I am a residential realtor here in Hendersonville and throughout Middle Tennessee. Um, typically, we see a slowdown in the market this time of year, um, but with people working from home and kids doing remote school, people are realizing that their housing needs just don't work for them anymore. So we haven't seen the traditional slowdown in the real estate market like we typically see from end of October till the first of the year. So um, really my focus for the next couple of weeks is setting up to hit the ground running in January as far as making sure all the marketing is in place and having the strategy. So this call is very relevant today for that. Get the so book. I appreciate that. It helps. Get the book. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we, I uh, just been busy and that busy is good. Yeah, absolutely. Big blessing. Wonderful. Thank you, Nicole. Thank Sarah, you. we don't see your video, but if you want to tell us who you are and who you're with. I don't know if she had hand. She had okay. trouble connecting to her audio and I wasn't able to mute her. So okay. I think she never got connected to the audio. So Sarah, got if it. you can hear us, if you can chat, um, then add your information to the chat feature for us. Perfect. Let's go back to Christina. Good morning. I'm Christina, marketing director, oddly enough, and executive board member for Shine Pediatric Therapy. Hendersonville is our second location. Um, we were in business in Robertson County for 11 years. So we work with mostly the special needs pop population um, in pediatrics. And then we also do sports injury recovery for young athletes. So um, Christina, my email is Christina at shinepediatrictherapy.com. And the chamber has been awesome for us. I'm excited to get my hands on your book and just go because COVID has created a lot of hurdles in marketing. Um, I've gone to digital facts, no more in-person visits with physicians and stuff like that. So it's been 
it's been a challenge. Absolutely. If after COVID, when we can be in person, if you can go by and take a tour of Shine Pediatrics, if you allow that, Christina, it is a beautiful facility. Very well done in there. Very proud to have them as a neighbor. That's where I'm at. Um, Madeline. Hi, I'm Madeline. Um, I'm the market programs coordinator for the BBB of Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky. Um, I'm actually here on behalf of the marketing and communications manager, Caleb, um, but I'm actually really glad that I was able to join. John, I loved listening to you. I'm going to go get your book because um, I have a marketing background. So a lot of this is pretty relevant to my job and my background experience. Um, but I guess just things that are happening with the BBB is we're trying to wrap up um, for the holidays and we're really trying to push the messages out there because with COVID, you know, there's a lot more online scams. So we're trying to reach the small businesses and the consumers and everything. So this is pretty relevant to, to what we're trying to do right now. Um, and then just a side note, uh, we just launched our Students of Integrity Scholarship Program. So we're starting to get in touch with all the high schools so we can nominate students of integrity um, and everything. So, yeah, that's it. That. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the call today. Glad you're here. Thank you for hosting. Thank you. All right. Do we have Genesis Life Center? There you are. Hello, I'm Toya Brown. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I am actually um, in quarantine. I, let's say, did not have the good pleasure of uh, contact contracting COVID-19. Um, so I am recuperating at home. I know I'm a diehard to be on here while I'm sick, but I got the email and I said, I worked so hard all year can never attend anything. So now that I'm physically at home, I am going to put forth the effort to tap in. And I'm so glad I did, John. Your presentation was awesome. Um, what I do is I teach meditation classes. Um, most people know me from being in the library. We host mindfulness meditation. Our niche is helping people to um, overcome depression, anxiety, worry, high blood pressure without medicines. You can use meditation um, to achieve your fullest potential as well as help you on a physical level. Um, most of our programs we offer to the community, every month we'll do a free one and then we will charge for weekly um, programs. We ramped up the year, um, so we're actually gonna kick back up in January. Um, Kathleen actually helped me uh, a year ago to find a place at, uh, um, visionary workspaces because um, we were the library had closed because of the pandemic and she helped me to get there so we have our classes there um, and that's uh, pretty much why I'm here I actually feel great looking at healthy people and and uh, just to be a, in the energy uh, COVID is no joke I will tell you that but Absolutely. I'm glad to be here well, I'm so glad you're on the call and I'm so thankful that we have a chamber that thinks outside of the box and has um, platforms like this where we can connect with people that are at home or working from home or quarantine. So I'm glad you're on the call and I pray you feel better and have a great holiday. Thank you for being on here. And uh, Alive Nashville, are you able to speak? That's my, uh, that's my church, by the way. That's, I'm the marketing director for the church as well. Oh, are you? Okay, oh, well, yeah. great. Well, that might be Brandon. you want to tell us about church? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, do I want to tell you about church? Yeah. Uh, Alive Nashville is a, a we, it's a church plant. Uh, we started uh, a year ago, actually, in September. And then we, were, we met at the YCAP building in Five Points in Nashville. And then the tornado hit the building <laughs> and the top of it caved in. And uh, so we didn't have a place to meet. So we have been doing the online thing. We're old school. Before the pandemic. You know, we've been doing this. For, we started about two months before everybody else was the online uh, system. So we had a, you know, online services though. And we had to find a way to pivot to that uh, and, and grow our church, uh, which turned out to be where everybody else was going anyway. So uh, we grew it online more. Um, and now we're just getting back to the point where 
we're hoping to, to meet online more often or excuse me in person more often and uh, I, yeah, I play music too I play the bass and the piano I think we're doing a pre-recorded uh, holiday service so um, yeah, if you like music and you are looking for a church Alive Nashville is a great place to uh, to look into <laughs> so Wonderful. great church well good and last but not least and I've saved her for last because she's our guest from Vermont so Isella can you tell us a little about who you are Hi, my pleasure. So um, I know Jonathan back uh, 2000, I would say 2004. Um, I have a marketing background. So I worked for an advertising agency in New York City for many years, um, Foot Conan Belding, and I worked in the new business management department. And after 911, I had three young kids. And my husband is a TV director producer, and uh, we moved back to Vermont where he's originally from. So we moved here and I partnered with my husband and we formed Verdi Group Films and that's where we met Jonathan and Jonathan has been amazing and I am so proud to see him here presenting to you guys and his wisdom and what he's learned from this um, this industry which is amazing. Um, we still are in production here in Vermont. Things are a little slower at this point, um, you know, completely changed the way we market ourselves and the way we, um, you know, you produce stuff. It's not like it used to be. So it's definitely a lot more digital. And um, I cannot say more to, to be able to Zoom with everybody and being, seeing everybody's faces. Um, you know, for us, it's, it's it's incredible to see this happening and for me to see Jonathan presenting here it just gives me so much joy and happiness um and so on the side I also represent a company that's a holistic anti-aging wellness and they're out of Dallas Texas and um I've just something I did on the side a side hustle I'm doing which I love and um we are launching in January the first um weight management system that will really help to reduce your white fat to brown fat, which you can then burn much easier. So it's not a diet plan. It's just um, a holistic way of eating healthier and then helping you to burn your brown fat better than the white fat you have. So Wonderful. I am just- And you put your information in the chat, didn't you? Yes. Okay, and it's perfect thing to just be here with you guys. Um, I saw, um, you know, talk to Jonathan and my husband and I are just with joy to see this for him and to see him. He's an amazing man. Uh, Mike, we're a big fan. <laughs> Isella, you're the best. He's, it's so good to see you, Isella. I'm so happy you joined us. I learned, let me tell you, Verity Group Films, <laughs> Isella and Dennis taught me so much. Uh, it, it was really where I got a big part of my, my start in, in television commercials. I learned more from them than anybody else uh, in, in the television commercial business. So oh, what a pleasure. I, I started as a production assistant and then went all the way up to directing commercials for them. So it was uh, early in my career. What That's a pleasure. Great. Well, uh, great support having you on the call today. So thank you for being here. And thank you everyone for being on the call today. Thank you, John, for the great information. And once again, if you haven't gotten the book, go get the book, Marketing Ain't Easy. Um, and he makes it easy in this book. So thank you so much. And Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all of you. Um, everyone stay safe and healthy. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas.